I'm about to show you a video that I made earlier. Now I'm going to edit this video and present it to you because this subject is very emotional to me. If you saw my video from yesterday, uh, that was a lot of speaking from the heart because I'm, I'm very conflicted about this. I love the Phantom Menace community. I love so much what we stand for, fighting for our modern mythologies, fighting against SJWs and cancel culture, fighting the echo chamber of Hollywood and the industry, uh, their industry approved racism and sexism and dogma that I'm writing volumes of books celebrating our community and documenting what has happened in entertainment over the last decade and a little bit more because this is important to who we are. I love the fandom menace. I call myself the fandom menace historian, not only because I need a catchy brand, but because I want to document this experience, this living history that we're going through, this pushback to toxicity, true toxicity in our entertainments, a toxicity that in our entertainments is pressed upon the masses and those of weak will, those who have hate in their heart, those who live in perpetual for fear and victimhood, embrace as a message that validates them going out and canceling people and hate mobbing people, tearing statues down and burning our local businesses to the ground. This is a multifaceted issue. In this little niche of the culture war, I'm fighting for our entertainments. And that's why I'm documenting the fandom menace. There has been something that I have not spoken on for weeks because some of us, very important people, important voices who have stood up for us in the past, have decided to ally themselves with a very questionable company. A company that hires SJWs. That pushes that social justice politics and not only that funds organizations to bail out domestic terrorists black lives matter riders antifa members the question has torn me asunder i reached out to a friend about this because the first video uh, before I edited this, it was very emotional, just like the one before. And he guided me, I think, more in the direction that I needed to go. Uh, thank God for friends. I love you, brother. So my question here is, as the fandom menace historian, because the actual debate that had been brought up was brought up by a group that a lot of people in the fandom menace avoid if they even know that they're there and people in comics gate avoid because they of the rift that's happened between them and EVS. I am speaking of war campaign. Now let me make this clear. I do not in any way, shape or form condone the inhumane bitch ass attacks that have come at Anna that Star Wars girl in no way. I've even let them know I can't co-sign to that. This is a question that comes from, yes, maybe a group that some of us don't like, don't want to give any validation to, don't want to listen to, don't want to give any time a day. But it is, is a fact, not a fact. As I believe it in The Phantom Menace, we stand up for the right to have an opinion even if that opinion is shit. You have the right to express an opinion. This is not a question that is being posed uh, by war campaign. This is a question that is being asked by me, your fandom menace historian. Someone who tries to love and respect all of our voices, everyone who kicked this off. I hope you stick around for the entire video. It's going to be a long one, but please understand that this is a very complex issue. Um, if this is your first time coming here, I hope I earn your subscription. And if uh, you're returning, uh, if you're a returning viewer, this is going to be an addition to yesterday's and more comprehensive understanding of what I was talking about. And if you are one of the first wave of the fandom menace and you happen to be watching this, please watch it all the way through.
and understand where I, someone who has been in your chats since day one, is concerned about this specific issue. Enjoy. I've been doing some research for a follow-up video, and I have to say, you can't look up anything connected to dynamite right now without it leading back to Cecil. So on that front, congratulations, Cecil. Everybody's talking about you. Well played. Hey, boys, look what I got here. Hey, where are the white women at? My journey with this whole situation, as far as the video that I released yesterday, honestly started with the announcement that Cecil had been canceled uh, by SJWs in the industry and their hate mobs. We all know the story. This has been going on for years and years and years. Uh, nobody outside of their bubble, of their group think, wants anything to do with anyone else who doesn't believe in their same ideologies and rhetoric and bullshit. And so they cancel anyone. Uh, they send hate mobs. They use intimidation to, in order to defame, destroy any opportunities that they can for creators. Joke's on them, though, because Cecil's cash grab has been an amazing success. Uh, congratulations to him, you know, from one independent creator to another. The thing that got me pissed is that nobody has been talking about the bigger story, in my opinion, concerning Dynamite. I myself have kept quiet on this because people that I respect and to a degree fear in the community are attached to dynamite. But I'm unwilling to compromise my morality, my integrity, than to just continue to be silent on something. The entire community is freaking out. People in Comicsgate, the fandom menace, everybody's rallying on. Like, F these SJWs. How dare they? How could they cancel Cecil? This is just the industry doing the same thing over again. When nobody's been talking about the fact that some of the people that we that we respect and that you know some of us love and some of us support all the time have already been in bed with this shit. They've already been in bed with it. If you're working with Mark Wade and Gail Simone and Dynamite Comics who's supporting people being freed from jail after going out and burning down uh, towns and destroying local businesses. Um, nobody's talking about that. The reason nobody talked about it is the same reason that a lot of people got pissed off at me since yesterday. It's because I mentioned War Campaign. They're the only people that are talking about this. There's a vicious fight going on uh, between War Campaign and Comicsgate. If you even mention War Campaign, you get canceled. Give them any, any, any recognition whatsoever. I want to be straight up honest with you. Um, I don't like a lot of what's said over a war campaign. I don't agree with it. I don't agree with it so much that that plus all of the fighting that's been going on, I backed away from, from everybody because of it. I just wanted to stay out of the drama. And there's a lot of us out there who feel the same way that haven't spoken up, that have spoken in private to one another, who are just tired of all this garbage, um, and just want to make books, just want to create just want to give make something for the customer quality for the customer you know that's that's what we're in this for i get nobody speaking up but this is a legit story but before we get into that before i expound upon yesterday about what i meant what i meant yesterday i want to talk about this because this is where it started uh this is a bounding into comics article from john f trent it's uh, Dynamite Comics announces Cecil's big cover canceled after targeted by social media campaign involving Garrison, Gar Gail Simone, Mark Russell, Doc Sharner, and more. Shanner, whatever. I don't even care about these people. It's funny that up in the corner, I think right above me here, uh, is this thing. BLM supporters murder young white mother for saying all lives matter. That's very relative. Very relative to, uh, to what we're going to be talking about in this video. Dynamite Comics announced they would no longer be publishing Cecil's big cover, a variant cover for upcoming Vengeance of Vampirella number one series by Tom Sinensky, I probably butchered that name, I apologize, and artist uh, Michael St. Maria. I probably butcher it all, I don't know these people. I, I'm not a comics person, guys, so I am a little bit out of my water on this. Uh, the comic book publisher had recently announced the variant cover would launch an Indiegogo campaign on July 17th. At the time of writing, the campaign had raised $9,140. That's a success. And the cover is funny. I'm a fan of Cecil. Uh, I think this is hilarious. Now, although I'm very questioning of why these people that I like are involved with Dynamite, 
but we'll get into that later. Uh, but I do enjoy Cecil. I'm going to leave a link to his channel and uh, his cash grab in the description below. I mean, look at that. That's funny. <laughs> Dynamite Comics made an announcement that the project was canceled on Twitter with a quote from Dynamite publisher and CEO Nick Barucci. Barucci wrote, uh, In speaking with Cecil, neither of us realized the cover would be so polarizing. We discussed and are not moving forward with the cover of the campaign. Well, I gotta call BS on some of that. Uh, Cecil knew damn well that that was going to be polarizing. And that was a great move, man. That's an excellent move. Uh, pretty new. You knew that it was that these SJWs were going to get pissed off and start some crap. You knew that there was going to be a chance that this would happen, and you knew that the community would rally around you, that the industry would be talking about you, that articles all over the internet would be talking about this, dude. Cecil, bravo, bravo, dude. Great move. All pub publicity is good publicity. On the Indiegogo campaign, they also provide an update. The update reads, we've discussed with Cecil, blah, blah, yada, yada, yada. And, yeah, so uh, I w I'm not going to read the whole article. I'd like you guys to go to Bounty in the Comics. I really love those guys over there. Go check out this article um, and uh, enjoy. Enjoy it. Now, I'd like to get into why I created my video yesterday. A uh, very polarizing video that has pissed off a few people, some of them that I, I call friend. Uh, let me expound upon this. A fact, no matter where it comes from, is still a fact. If our people we disapprove of, disagree with, vehemently hate, if they present a fact in an argument, it is still a fact. This is something that I've been unaware of until this whole thing popped off. Um, you know, I really honestly was unaware of the Bail Project. And because I'm fair, I'm going to present different sides of this argument or different sides of this discussion. Because we should all be fair when we represent things to our knowledge, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, this is called the Humble Bundle. Uh, it is something that has done both good and bad and what i mean by that and we're going to get into why is that as we all know who's been watching the the culture of social justice warriors rise they usually attach themselves to something good and then pervert it change it use the right buzzwords but use it to fit their ideology and if you don't agree with that ideology well then you get canceled like cecil just got canceled this is the Humble Bundle. Uh, it is a network of several different companies who have come together uh, to present materials uh, for donations. And these donations can be any range of, of, of amount of money. Uh, they have different tiers. Uh, go check it out for yourself. It's uh, HumbleBundle.com. You know, do some research yourself. Uh, they are to support these three things. The Bail Project, the Carl Brandon Society, and the National Urban League. Now, my concern here is the Bail Project. What is the Bail Project? Well, let's go find out. So the Bail Project, in the idea of it, is, in my opinion, a good thing. As a person who has been incarcerated before and unable to pay bail, uh, there, is, there is a problem in this country... Absolutely. The criminal justice system is in need of so much reform, it's not funny. Uh, sorry, guys, we're covering a lot of subjects on this one video. Um, and one of the things that the criminal justice system does is it keeps people in a rotation. Uh, most of you don't know that the, the jail systems have been really corporatized. Corporatized? The jail, the jail systems have been taken over by corporations, right? Uh, you're literally just a number at this point. And each jail gets funding from the state or federal government for each inmate. It is in their best interest to have a full jail. They get more money. And this is from the ground level up. This comes from uh, this, your, sto your state. This comes from your state and local governments giving out crap fines uh, to people just walking down the street. Uh, for, for nonsense, just to make money for the state or just to make money for your local township. 
Uh, this also leads to people being incarcerated on BS charges, being placed in jails uh, when they should not be, having to pay fines and bails that they should not have to pay. It's a money scheme. The criminal justice system is a money scheme. If you ain't figured that out, you ain't been paying attention. So the bail project in its in its infancy, uh, well, in its infancy, but the bail project what it is trying to do it is trying to help people who are unable to pay their bail who are in jail uh for 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 minor charges that's a good idea that's because frankly that the whole system is broken in my opinion please go check out uh the bailproject.org look at the video that uh, that was in the beginning it was well shot well presented story i do believe that when this story was presented when this organization was created that it was done so uh with a genuine interest to people to the poor to those who cannot pay their own bail unfortunately sjw's appropriate good ideas and turn them to shite this is kyra harvey she is a bail disruptor in indianapolis Kira is a local activist. Uh, she has spent several years doing work in property management and working toward her real estate license. In addition to managing properties, she is one of the organizers for Black Lives Matter Indianapolis. For the past five years, she has helped fight against police brutality and systemic racism in the city, uplifting the black women and femmes. What? I don't even know what that. And focusing on how to create housing for people who have felonies. She has a deep love for her community and hopes to help change the criminal legal system. Again, there's certain words and terms that are used here that uh, I could agree with or I'd be on 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 par with. But uh, for those of you who have been paying attention, and I've had to even expand my thinking on this subject somewhat because of the different types of people that i associate uh, associate with in the fandom menace because we're not an echo chamber um there's a difference between the idea of black lives matter and corporate black lives matter uh and there are many people i believe in both of these groups both of these these whatever they are uh that are really just racists in disguise um you know i can't in a with a good heart support anything black lives matter like i wouldn't support anything kkk all right to me they're both racist hate groups but people that i trust and love have told me different so i will accept that that is not how they see it um a lot of red flags here if you haven't already felt them uh she's a local activist act activist i mean it's a shame that the word activist has such a negative connotation to it now because a lot of a lot of projects a lot of organizations a lot of charities a lot of things that had great intentions to start off with um are are, are have been taken over by far leftists and they're they're garbage they're not what they say they're fighting for in typical sjw fashion miss uh, you know of misdirection you know she's one of the organizers for black lives matter indianapolis like uh i i, I, I we see what what's what's going on right uh for the past five years she's helped to fight against police brutality well i don't want to see police brutality either uh, and systemic racism in the city Systemic racism is, is for the most part, a myth. Sorry. Sorry anybody out there is cringing or crying. But it is. Um, I'd like to get my white privilege card, please. Where can I apply for this white privilege card? Because I, I, apparently, I'm not only holding people down, but I own people. And I have all kinds of privilege. And, 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 and all these things that help me proceed in life and do better for myself. Knock that shit off. It's classism, not racism. The rich versus what used to be the middle class and the poor. It's not about color. It's about how much money you have. We see what's going on. We see what's going on in the country. And uh, how these peaceful protesters are burning down cities. They're also getting bailed out. This is an article from Publisher Weekly. It is written by someone by the name of Calvin Reed. It was released on the 3rd of July, 
2020. Uh, Humble Bumble, <laughs> Humble Bumble, uh, Humble Bundle rises to new challenges. Since the pandemic began shutting down parts of the U.S. economy earlier this year, Humble Bundle has been an indispensable fundraising platform for book-related and pandemic nonprofits. Under the Humble Bundle model, uh, consumers can pay what they wish for a DRM-free digital content, with some of these proceeds going to nonprofits. Okay. Uh, in a partnership with the Book Industry Charitable Foundation, Humble Bundle has helped raise more than 450000 to support independent booksellers and comic retailers since the beginning of 2020. Beautiful. Good. Because these people need it. Especially the comic book shops. Because the industry doesn't care about them. In addition, Humble Bundle has helped raise more than $70,000 over the same period for the Hero Initiative, a fund that supports comic creators in need, as well as more than $40,000 for every library, a political action committee that supports initiatives related to library funding. Um, now, we're going to skip forward. These are all good things, right? These are, well, depending on your perspective, these are all good things. Uh, and I have no problem with this. My issue is down below. In April, with help... Uh, with the help of ebook and graphic novel publishers, Humble Bundle raised more than $6.5 million via its Conquer COVID bundle to support those affected and responding to this pandemic. In the wake of the death of George Floyd at the hands of Minneapolis police on May 25th, Humble Bundle raised more than $4.3 million via its Fight for Racial Justice bundle, with all proceeds going to three organizations, The Bail Project, the NAACP Legal Fund, and Race Forward. Let's just check out what Race Forward is for a minute. Pretty sure you, you all know what the NAACP is. Let's join us for our online racial equity training. <sighs> Already a bad word. We know what equity means. Equity doesn't mean equality. Equity means giving advantage to the segment of the population in order to devalue another. Um, what is systemic racism? Uh, you know what? Go check out raceforward.org yourself this is this is racist bs um th this is the, uh, the the narrative this is uh far left go check it out yourself this is far left bullshit uh, you know okay so we already know and naacp you know but people got different feelings on that i got my own feelings on that and uh and and the bail project now the bail project right now this is this is a good thing, right? Now, now, as we all know, the whole country, the whole country, no matter who you were, was upset about George Floyd. Um, well, with, with the exception of a few, um, but most of us, empathetic feeling people, I don't know if I have enough melanin for that, you know, to be empathetic, feel that that was horrible, the murder of George Floyd. That emotion, that backlash, people taking to the streets in order to vent their frustration about this open slaughter of a man was appropriated by far leftists as they always do and turned into something else it was turned into was it turned into riots turned into looting again you know let's not wait for the facts to come in let's not wait for the coroner's reports let's not wait for the justice to see if the justice does their job let's wait for the facts let's not do that um I understand people taking to the streets out of frustration. I was frustrated myself. Frankly, I wanted to be out there too. But as soon as the Antifas and Black Lives Matter showed up, I knew it was going south, and then here we are. Weeks and weeks and weeks of destruction, disorder, chaos, businesses being burned, people being assaulted, people being murdered. Um, because of this racist, these racist hate groups, uh, and in my opinion, racist hate groups, and um, because nobody's standing up against it. So, <clears throat> since early April, Humble Bundle has launched several bundles aimed at raising funds uh, for the book industry and for the victims of the pandemic. Uh, among the publishers that have supported these bundles with ebook content are Abrams, Adams Media, Frog God Games, IDW, Image Comics, John Wiley and Sons, Mango Media, Morgan and Claypool, No Starch Press, and Quarto. Um, Allen also said that noted comics writer Gail Simone, 
who has written for DC, Dynamite, Image, Marvel, and many others, is teaming up with culture journalist Karma Horn, Meki Kendai, author Hood Feminism, and L.L. McKinney, author of A Blade So Black Trilogy, uh, to launch a new bundle that supports Black Lives Matter nonprofits. We all know what that means, bailing criminals out of jail. Funneling money to the Demo to the DNC. Uh, remember, if you're not, if you don't vote for Biden, you ain't black. Um, uh, it, just terrible things, right? Black Lives Matter Corporation is not good. It's SJW. It's look over here while we're doing this. It, 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 it's propaganda pushing racism, uh, continuing the, the 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 riots and the looting. You can't sway me from that. You can't sway me from that that outlook. I'm sorry. It's what it is. Alan also said this new bundle will be key in launching in early July. Here's an article from Variety, somebody we love to report on, right? Uh, by Meg Zukin, Black Lives Matter, 18 organizations that are bailing out protesters. George Floyd, Tony McDay, Breonna Taylor, these are the names of just three black people who were killed by police officers since the beginning of the year since their death's powerful and peaceful protests against police brutality. Uh, I've swept the country. Police officers have arrested thousands of demonstrators and organizers nationwide raising funds. And uh, organizers nationwide are raising funds for their bails. They're raising funds for people who are destroying neighborhoods. Isn't that virtuous? Isn't that wonderful? Now, mind you, I do believe that there are people who have been arrested uh, during some of these protests that were there peacefully you know there's always an exception to the rule but for the most part i think we've seen what these groups have been up to tearing down statues destroying businesses attacking other citizens uh shouting over you shaming you into obscurity uh beating you uh murdering you you know like they did in the chop when they finally had to take that down because they murdered a couple uh they murdered a black kid uh and uh, nobody reported on it in the news, um, look, guys, this is a very emotional thing for me. Uh, I think for a lot of people in America and in other countries that are suffering through anything like this, um, I have watched as my country, America, the United States, uh, got better in race relations, like way better than we were in 89 to 2009 uh i saw a vast improvement in acceptance people working together people learning together uh you know just a, a ton of work and then the last 10 years this far left as social justice ideology took hold it's one of the reasons why i'm writing the fandom menace volumes and i'm sticking to entertainment news i'm sticking to entertainment the history of entertainments in that in, in those volumes but i am indeed fighting the culture war i'm indeed showing you what happens through the lens of entertainment when something that was once good was meant for everyone is a, is, a, is 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 hijacked is taken over by social justice warriors by sjw's by far leftists that use as a platform to espouse their rhetoric and it sours the games the comics the television the movies the modern mythology things people have loved it sours these things sours them just and then they set about attacking the legacy fandoms the traditional customers if they don't agree with it this is something that far leftists do in every part of this culture war every part whether it's a non-profit organization whatever it is this is what they do the fandom and his volumes is speaking about in entertainments and the people that spoke out against this 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 injustice this egregious appropriation misuse destruction of our modern mythologies but it's also telling you a story i'm documenting history with this stuff that's going to be important i believe in the future but as i'm doing the research for this i see how people who are emotional about the murder of george floyd the situation with Tony and Brianna. Whatever those situations, you may think of any of those situations. 
Uh, the George Floyd is absolutely positively 100%. There's no way to look at it any other way. That dude was murdered for not. That dude was suffocated for nine minutes in the street. I don't care who you were. That's what happened. I don't care what condition he was in. I don't care what drugs he was on. I don't care how many times he had been to jail. Uh, that, that man lent on that dude's neck until he was dead. That's, that's, that's it. People have taken that rage of that injustice and have appropriated it to create chaos and disorder, to push their own narratives, to make millions upon millions of dollars for nonprofits to fund their political parties, to, fit, to fund their extremist wings, their, their paramilitary wings. It's sickening to watch how we are devolving. That's why my video yesterday was, was put up. So I'm very upset. I'm going to get to this toward the end. But there are people that I respect, that I look up to, that are in bed with people like that right now. Let's say they were fighting against it, and now they're in bed with them. Since they're desk powerful and peaceful pro protests, you, that's you know, it's, no. Uh, I guess police brutality is for the country, and, and, and it's not against police brutality. It, it was at first, but it's not now. It, it's about uh, 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 basically uh, just destroying the government so that they can create a new one where they're on top. These, this is peop the opportunistic people and very delusional people trying to upset the system so that they can take over. It is a, uh, a, a form of revolution. It is a rebellion uh, to some extent. It is. Uh, it's just that they're not the right, the, the, the righteous virtue warriors that they purport themselves to be. They're not. They're evil, sick, and will do anything, anything to destroy you if you don't co-sign to their ideologies. The Minnesota Freedom Fund has raised $20 million in a matter of days and is now directing donations and other bail funds across the country to support Black Lives Matter movement by donating to any one of these 16 community bail funds. It's a money scheme, y'all. It's a money scheme. Be real. Come on now. Um, one of them is the Bail Project. Now, I don't want to come down hard on the Bail Project because as I said, watch that video. Go to, go to their... Go to that website, check out that video. That, that story is pretty upsetting. And uh, it's a story about a guy who was picked up for something stupid, uh, was, was, was brought before a, a magistrate or a judge and uh, said, you know, you're going to get bail for this. Uh, and he couldn't pay it, and they threw him in jail. And look, he says one thing that's for real. It doesn't matter if you're guilty, innocent, have no idea what's going on. The minute those doors close behind you, you're a criminal. You're a number. You're a piece of meat. And it don't matter what color you are or where you come from. That's how you're treated. I know because I've been there. Now, watch a story from uh, 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 Fox 2, I think it was. Um, and I wanted to find something more on it. And it was about a story about a guy who the Bell Project released. And the interviewer or the investigative journalist or whatever he was was trying to get a hold of the bail project and you know god darn it by luck every time they went to go knock on that door and interview them the lights just went out uh and nobody wanted to talk so there was a story um where someone was released uh through use of the bail project and this person was put in jail for hitting their wife but this is a story about a woman by the name of Marcia Johnson. She was 54 uh, of St. Louis. She was found brutally murdered in her South City home. And the suspect, her husband, Samuel Lee Scott, was apparently coming straight from jail to commit the crime after bail. Uh, this guy beat his wife, got put in jail, couldn't afford to get out. The wife put a restraining order on him. Bail Project swooped in and said, oh my God, a black man in jail and, swing, and got him out. And the first thing he did was go home and murder his wife. One of the bail bondsmen in the area spoke on this, and he was talking about how the bail project is indiscriminate with who they let out. They don't, they don't really look at the precautions, you know, the precautionary. Something like this, a bail bondsman would have uh, looked up and made sure what was going on in the circumstance, would have seen that the wife had a um, restraining order, and may not even have given out the bond. 
you know, um, you know, who knows what precautions would have been made to protect the alleged victim. Um, and now you can look at this one of a few ways. Like I said, the criminal justice system is about making money. Bail bondsmen are about making money. Uh, so you take that, that story any way you want, take what he said any way you wish. But at the end of the day, uh, bail bondsmen, uh, you know, they have a job to do. A lot of them take that job seriously. There are, there need to be precautions put in place. When someone's released, like, you can't just have a charity come up in there and be like, oh my God, you know, <laughs> you you poor person. Because what's happening now is that the Bail Project and other organizations are releasing Black Lives Matter protesters who are burning down buildings, committing acts of violence, um, and Antifa, who I'm sure, you see Antifa all the time going, Black Lives Matter. Uh, you know, I'm sure they, they they identify as a Black Lives Matter protester to get some free money. And there's also organizations out there that are straight bailing out, you know, straight bailing out Antifa. George Soros has donated $15 million. $15 million to bailing out these criminals. These violent, I'm sorry peaceful protesters so the question has to be asked i see everybody freaking out about cecil getting canceled i think that was a great commercial move cecil great commercial move everybody in the fandom menace is rah 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 uh, f these sjw's people in that have stuck with the evs side of comics gate they're like rah 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 f these sjw's how could they do that my question is which is more important, y'all? Which is more important? Someone uh, getting canceled by SJWs, uh, hate mob, cancel culture, you know, um, dynamite comics, bending the knee to cancel culture, stopping this variant cover. There's nothing wrong with this variant cover. There's nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with Cecil. Is that more important than the fact that Cecil or anybody else hasn't had a single issue getting in bed with Dynamite Comics, who hires SJWs, who have been talking down at us, trying to cancel us, basically the epitome of everything that we've been fighting in the fandom menace, and Comicsgate, I would guess, for years getting in bed with them and then not saying a word about dynamite helping to fund organizations that are freeing violent criminals what is more important what is more important is it everyone rallying to advocate or celebrate a wonderful strategic marketing move? Is it the fandom menace backing someone, anyone, who continues to work with a company that supports ideologies we have been fighting against vehemently for two years that has insulted us, berated us, canceled us, and hate mobs doxed us, actively tried to destroy us and our professional relationships, threatened our children and our families, and at the same time, funds organizations, racist hate groups, who free criminals who are helping to destroy our neighborhoods, create division, bigotry, and hate. It's been a heart-wrenching question for me, but now I bring that question to you. I bring that question to you because I am the fandom menace historian. I document, document these things. What's going on in the culture war, in entertainments. And I need to know from you, what's your answer? 
Because I'm recording you. You back who you want to back. You support who you want to support. You have the right to your own opinion. But as we watch as companies like Rotten Tomatoes, Metacritic, um, as we watch the industry form to protect itself from allowing the expression of fandoms to give their opinion, you really, the only thing you have left is to vote with your wallet to choose to support or not support what you want. I'm tired of having to worry about what others are going to think of me because I have to ask this question. So I'm asking you, Fandom Menace, what's your answer? Where do you stand? Are we who we started out to be? Are we who we set out to be? People that fight this type of culture, identity politics, oppression Olympics, the creation of division and hate, propaganda that has further divided us through the use of entertainments to validate the hate-filled, fearful expressions of anarchists racist hate groups, people who just want to destroy you, who wouldn't give you a second thought. Like, if we're just here to make money, then that's what it is. I'm here to make some money, but not to compromise my values. I am author Stephen Walton, the fandom menace historian, your historian, and I do not Neil, thank you. Hail my brothers and sisters in the chat. Hail the Fandom Menace. It is the Fandom Menace Historian. Your Fandom Menace Historian, born in the chats with my brothers and sisters, letting you know that the Fandom Menace Volume 1 of Fandom Betrayed is back in demand. You can pick up this first edition book on Indiegogo for a limited time. Here's a comment from someone well-respected in our community, Shellback, commenting on the importance of the Phantom Menace Volume 1. I, you know, uh, uh, get on, uh, get on Indiegogo and, and order a copy of that damn book, or, or you're uh, uh, an effing retard, okay? That's, uh, yeah. Pick up your copy today.